Welcome to another presentation about the Carolina Base. The glacier ice impact hypothesis proposes that the Carolina Base originated from secondary impacts of glacier ice ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. Today, we're going to examine some bays that differ from the usual elliptical shape. Well-preserved Carolina Base and Nebraska rainwater basins have mathematically elliptical geometry. This can be demonstrated by fitting them with ellipses using the least squares method. Since ellipses are conic sections, this implies that the base originated as inclined conical cavities or penetration funnels. Using an experimental model, we can demonstrate that oblique impacts of ice projectiles on a viscous target produce inclined conical cavities that look elliptical when viewed from above, and the overturned flanges become raised rims around the cavity. Having established that the Carolina base originated as inclined conical cavities makes it possible to argue that the bays that do not have perfect geometry must have been modified at the time of emplacement when the ground was liquefied due to the seismic vibrations of the adjacent impacts or after the ballistic sedimentation by terrain movement, water erosion, wind erosion, bioturbation, or even earthquakes. Bioturbation includes the perturbation of soil by plants, burrowing animals, and human activities like mining, farming, and urbanization. South Carolina has a long history of earthquakes. The 1886 earthquake resulted in about 60 deaths and extensive damage to the city of Charleston. Areas that are subject to liquefaction from seismic tremors, like the Hellhole Bay Wilderness, which is more than 20 meters above sea level, have very few Carolina bays, even when the bays are abundant in adjacent, more solid terrain. This LiDAR image shows some bays that are about 10 kilometers or 6 miles southwest from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The image represents an area of 2.5 by 4.5 kilometers or about 11 square kilometers. The topography uses a color spectrum that cycles every 10 meters. The central area of a Carolina Bay is usually flat and has a single color that contrasts with the color of the raised rim, which is about 1 or 2 meters higher than the center of the bay. Michael Davies has cataloged and marked many bays in the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth. This image shows 13 bays that have been marked with a red dot and overlaid with a dotted outline and a yellow arrow, indicating the direction from which a bay formed. If we look carefully, we can see indentations in the ground of many small bays that are not cataloged because they don't have well-defined rims. This image highlights 11 uncatalogued bays with lengths of 100 to 200 meters. Carolina bays are fragile sandy structures and many have disappeared due to erosion over thousands of years. We can say with confidence that less than half of the bays have been cataloged. Today we will study three large bays and one small uncatalogued bay. The first bay is extremely eroded. It has a high rim on the east side, and the drainage channel traverses the whole bay, leading toward Whirlwind Creek. In order to fit an ellipse to this bay, points are selected along the perimeter of the bay, ignoring the secondary rim marked with the arrow. Even though the bay did not look exactly elliptical, the ellipse has a good fit. Only two points on the perimeter of the bay do not fall on the elliptical curve. Secondary rims are formed during viscous relaxation when the liquefied soil cannot form a flat surface. Secondary rims are observed in experimental impacts when the viscosity of the target prevents the soil from flowing freely while the target container is shaken to speed up viscous relaxation. The diameter of the glacier ice projectile that made this basin is estimated to be 180 meters, which is one-fifth of the basin length. The kinetic energy of the impact was equivalent to 4.26 megatons of TNT, which would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 7.9. The second bay that we will study is shaped like a guitar pick. There is a large sand rim extending to the southeast of the bay, but it is impossible to tell whether it is the rim of a bay that was overlaid or material that was displaced during the building of the road intersection. The satellite view of the bay does not show anything remarkable other than the roads that go along the margins of the bay. The place marker along Mac Road is a convenient location for viewing the bay. Google Street View lets us examine the interior of the bay. Like many bays that have not been developed for agriculture, the ground is covered with a variety of grasses and some scrawny trees. In order to fit the bay with an ellipse, we select some points along the perimeter where the flat center of the bay meets the raised rim. Three points do not fall on the elliptical curve. Point number one is inside the ellipse, and points two and three are outside the ellipse. These distortions are a consequence of the forces that modify the bay. 
This situation is encountered frequently for bays that have been deformed and inclined to rain. In South Carolina, along the Savannah River, there are many impact basins on inclined terrain that have this guitar pick shape. Notice that all the flattened portions on the north side of the base are at higher elevation than the center of the base. A downhill impact creates an inclined conical cavity with a steeper grade on the rear part of the penetration funnel. During viscous relaxation, liquefied soil flows into the rear of the basin while the whole hillside slides downward and stretches the basin. The impact of an ice projectile on a viscous target produces a conical cavity that looks elliptical when viewed from above. The downhill impact modification can be modeled by tilting the impact target in the direction of the impact during viscous relaxation. The rear part of the impact cavity is modified by the flow of viscous medium into the cavity as the whole surface slides downhill. The Third Carolina Bay in our area of study has a thick rim toward the east. Pay close attention to the colors of the topography by the rim. It is evident that the impact that formed our third bay was preceded by another uncatalogued impact. The basin of the previous uncatalogued impact is highlighted here. Our experimental model demonstrates that adjacent impacts on a viscous target tend to produce thick rims on the part that overlays the previous cavity. A projectile is able to plow target material easily on ground that has been softened by a previous impact. Selecting points along the perimeter of the bay and fitting an ellipse by the least squares method shows a very good fit. The major axis of the ellipse measures 328.8 meters. The diameter of the glacier ice projectile that made this basin is estimated to be 66 meters, which is one-fifth of the basin length. The kinetic energy of the impact that made this bay was equivalent to 197 kilotons of TNT, which is about 10 times more than the energy of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The impact would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 7.0. We now zoom in toward our fourth Carolina Bay. It is a small bay that was not cataloged. The bay does not have sharp margins. My best guess is that it has a length of 105 meters and a width of 90 meters. The striations running in a northwest direction are formed by rows of trees in a farm. There's a drainage ditch that runs from the center of the bay to where the nearby creek. The diameter of the glacier ice projectile that made this basin is estimated to be 21 meters, which is one-fifth of the basin length. The kinetic energy of the impact was equivalent to 7 kilotons of TNT. This would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 6.1, which is enough to liquefy unconsolidated soil. These tiny Carolina bays that we ignore today are equal in size to Oracle Park in San Francisco, which hosts the San Francisco Giants. It is the start of the Younger Dryas. It is time to play ball. About eight minutes ago, a comet hit the Laurentide ice sheet and ejected millions of glacier ash chunks. The ground is trembling as the ice boulders hit the ground around us. Everybody is very excited. This is going to be awesome. There is a saber to the tiger on third base and a woolly mammoth on first. Here comes the pitch. It is a 21 meter glacier ice boulder coming at three kilometers per second. It's a strike four! All the players are out. The mastodons and camels, mammoths, lions, giant armadillos, the saber-toothed tigers, and the Clovis culture became extinct 12,900 years ago at the onset of the Younger Dryas cooling event. The ice boulders ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet by the Great Lakes had a range of about 1,500 kilometers. There were survivors west of the Rocky Mountains, but life in America was changed forever. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.